Hello and welcome back and that is right it's time for another quick 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 comparison between two different four bay NASes and today we're looking at this the Synology DS923 plus and we're looking at this the Terramaster F4423 and I'm going to give you five reasons why you might want to consider the Synology and five reasons why you might want to consider the Terramaster and we're going to do it as quickly as possible. So straight away when it comes to these two, when it comes to the Synology, it should come as absolutely no surprise that one of the main reasons you're going to go for is DSM, Disk Station Manager, their own NAS software. It is so evolved, it's by far the best NAS software in the market, and when you are looking at any Synology solution, you have to work out that the, a lot of the money you're going towards is going more towards the software than it does to the hardware. The hardware of the Synology platform is very, very good, but there's no avoiding it that the bulk of that money going towards the software definitely benefits the platform in terms of the user interface, in terms of the usability, responsiveness applications and services there is just a wider degree of first party tools and services be they client side for windows mac android or ios system or the ones that you are utilizing within a um, um, uh, dsm itself alongside that when you are utilizing those system and services internally there is just replacement for third party apps and services too such as those found in the collaboration suite for chat mail calendar office and more as well as integrated services for saas and paas platforms of service and software as a service in the likes of um, Google Workspace and in Office 365, which allow you to integrate this as an on-prem bare metal backup and synchronized tool with your existing cloud services, something that although other NAS brands do provide some of or a lot of the features individually of, no one provides the full scope within the range of active backup and virtual machine deployment of virtual into physical VMs in the way that Synology does in DSM. What could possibly Terramaster bring to combat that? Well, first and foremost, it is so much more affordable. The Terramaster platform, if you aren't looking to spend the money that you've got in your hard-earned wallet towards all those software services and what you're looking for is metal and hardware and spec to run your third-party services and you want the system to run a small handful of NAS-centric applications and services, none of the highfalutin stuff, TOS on a Terramaster platform is just is still going to do the job for you. And moreover from that, it is just so much more affordable and lower priced. Not only is it better value, but arguably the price tag between the 923 and the Terramaster F4, depending on whether you're looking at Black Friday Prime Day or even just generally, the price tag is going to be 100 to in 200 nicker difference between them. So if money is really, really important to you. And a lot of those software services that I just listed on that big old barreled intro do not you know, float your boat. The Terramaster is going to do very, very, very good stuff for you there. But one thing I will highlight is to do with network connectivity because this device, although arriving with 2.5 GBE, which is great, and this device arrives with one GBE, which not, not a lot of us are keen on, it's worth highlighting this one can be upgraded to 10 GBE. There is a 10 GBE upgrade slot that you can go ahead and install the 130 to 140 NICA 10G upgrade on and add 10 gigabit ethernet to this device. There is no way to currently add 10 GBE to the Terramaster there. And when you're looking at four bays of storage and when you're looking at modern generation hard drives that can hit two to 250 megabytes per second and with both of these systems having m2 nvme base that can be used as raw storage pools ultimately it means that there are loads of ways in which you could fully saturate a 10 gbe external network connection and this has that but this has the throughput internally but externally it can only hit 5550 meg because those two um and 2.5 gbe slots so the base level between the two of the terramaster has better slots on the base level but in terms of scalability and upgradability down the line the uh, ds923 just has better scalability in its lifetime how can the terramaster compete with that once again well it comes down to usb which i know sounds weird but hear me out not only are the USB ports on this device, USB 3.2 Gen 2, which is 1,000 megabytes per second each, unlike the older Gen USB 3.2 Gen 1, which are 500 megs on this device, but the USB ports on this can be used for more things. Not only can you use faster M2-based SSDs uh, via external connectivity or RAID-equipped um, hard drive USB drive to hit that 1,000 megs, but on top of that, you can take advantage of 2.5G and 5G to USB bus powered adapters. You can add more network port to this. These adapters are currently not supported officially on the Synology platform. So although you can scale up to 10 GBE on this, and you've got those 1Gs by default, which is a bit meh, on this device, you've got 2.5 GBE 2 ports by default, and you can add 2.5 and 5G ports with USB adapters to this, enhancing its network ports and getting a better chance of taking advantage of all that additional bandwidth there. Moving back, 
we've got to talk design because I think everyone would largely agree that when it comes to the aesthetic design and architectural kind of work that's gone into these, the Synology not only looks the better, it is just a better design device between them. Both of them are four bays, but this device has a much more cubist design. It has ventilation built in a great deal better under those trays with an angular ventilation. We have vents on top of those M2 NVMe bays there on the base. The logos on the side are ventilated all the way around, allowing a greater degree of passive ventilation working in conjunction with the two rear mounted fans that are on the rear but this system overall just does a better job of keeping things cool and while still looking more modernistic between the two of them the chassis on the f4 is a little bit more dated it is metal all the way around so it will make a little bit more noise when in operation there is plastic on there but its majority of it is metal externally which when you use more aggressive enterprise grade hard drives is going to make a lot more noise there is ventilation on the base but the m2 nvme slots do not have ventilation on them and the ventilation on this is considered to be horizontal airflow with those rear mounted fans drawing air across the components but with less passive ventilation uh, on the device compared with the Synology and a more dated design I think in most people's eyes although it has been improved in recent years has to be said that in terms of design that Synology just wins the day there how can the TerraMaster pull things back well Let's come back to that subject of software because it's worth highlighting that with the TerraMaster, you're not just locked in on TOS. This is unofficial and this is something that the brand may not support you if you go down this road, but a lot of users know that you can upgrade this device to TrueNAS. You can install the ZFS TrueNAS system or the Linux-based version, TrueNAS Scale, on this system, something you cannot do on the Synology. The closest you can get is running TrueNAS as a VM, which again, you're putting hypervisor on layer upon layer, it's not worth it. So on this, this has a little USB key inside that has the initialization of TOS. So you can have the device running with TOS for a long time. And then if you're feeling like you wanna try out TrueNAS, what you can do is remove the drives that have got your TOS, pop it to one side, put in some fresh drives, one, two, whatever. Then you can remove that USB drive inside install, make sure it's powered down, a USB drive with the TrueNAS installation file, pop it in, you can install TrueNAS on this and enjoy TrueNAS on this. So for those of you that are interested in TrueNAS, but the idea of building a PC from scratch or trying to build a server grade 24 seven system and not just some big tower PC and getting silicon gel all over your fingers while you're trying to put that CPU into the socket, this will allow you to buy a turnkey off the shelf solution and turn it into the open source TrueNAS system, something you can't do on the Synology, but just bear in mind that by doing that, you're more than likely running the risk of ruining your support with TerraMaster there down the line if something goes wrong. But do remember, you can revert it back to TrueNAS, just power the device down, replace the drives with the original TOS drives that you were using, pop in the old USB, bingo bongo, you're back to TrueNAS, simple as. Now, on the Synology platform there, we talked about software, we talked about 10GBE, we talked about the design, but another choice that's been made on this system is the fact that it supports ECC memory. Both of these support officially up to 32 gig of memory, something I find very, very surprising there on the TerraMaster. But in the case of the Synology, not only does it support 32 gig, but it also supports 32 gig of ECC memory error correcting code, which means as data is passed through the system, it allows you, it allows the system to, as the data, go, data goes during the write, it takes a little bit of redundancy, a little bit of parity, a blueprint, if you will, a checksum, of the data and then as it passes through the memory at the end it compares that data it's a very caveman way of describing this it compares that data as it looked at the beginning and then if there any is any inconsistencies or errors it then repairs it based on that parity blueprint and then allows your warm and cold data to be free of inconsistencies and avoid things like bit rot there ecc memory is enterprise grade you don't really find it in desktops particularly on a four-way now so it's really really impressive that it's included here in the package with that Synology. But the TerraMaster does counter this with its inclusion of isolation mode. Isolation mode on this system allows you at the click of one single option to disable a whole bunch of remote level access stuff. Now, a lot of you might argue, why don't you just rip the LAN cable out? Well, if you do that, you might be running lots of internal systems and services, which will then you know, go nuts or alert or whatever internally. And next time you log in, it's all gonna go uh, dog's breakfast. But with this, isolation mode will either freeze, hibernate, or disable third-party applications. It will disable all SSH and Telnet level services on the system. It will also disable any remote access.php. 
and all of those third-party services, all of those remote accesses that are active are completely severed. And therefore, you can even um, only restrict it to localized access if you choose, and even then bind IPs if you or in clients if you really, really want to. What I'm saying is, it's a lot faster to sever all external access to this device than it is on the Synology where you have to go to several areas in order to do it safely. And again, it's something uh, TerraMaster introduced and I don't think they get anywhere enough credit for. But I do think it's worth highlighting why they included that feature. And the reason is because they were targeted by a ransomware attack and uh, at the end of 2021, early 2022. And they, you know, you know, they aren't, you know, they didn't say to, you know, ransomware uh, hitters, come get us, but there's still no avoiding that they were targeted along with a bunch of other brands. And although Synology have been hit by ransomware attacks, uh, and that was a malware attack, I believe, based uh, in 2014, it might have been 2012, with Sinolocker, since then, there has been nothing on the same scale as Deadbolt that impacted uh, Asus Thought, TerraMaster, and QNAP. So again, more fair play to them that they have not been targeted, and then their system seems to be robust enough, although, like that they have been targeted, there hasn't been any kind of reported success there. But that's just for now. Who knows what, how this video will look in the future. But when it comes back to the TerraMaster, one thing I will highlight, and I mentioned it earlier on, is both of these systems use M2 NVMe base that can be used for storage pools as well as for caching. But I will, what I will highlight is you can do a great deal more on the TerraMaster with those M2s, such as allowing app installation and system boot to a degree that you currently cannot do on the Synology platform. There. Again, there will come down a lot more to how many of the TOS applications you are using, but still nonetheless, it is something that you may want to bear in mind if you want to use the M2 MVMEs in the system for raw storage. And of course, there are still other things to bear in mind there, such as that 10 GBE versus 2.5 GBE by default. But this has been comparing the F443 with the Synology DS923. Both of these are great NAS systems. And we'll highlight they've got a lot in common. Everything from both supporting BTRFS and a fluid rate system to both of them arriving with their own AI-powered photo recognition surveillance tools and synchronized backup tools as well. So they're both great systems. But it has to be said that when it comes to the hardware, it's a little bit more this side of the table. And when it comes to software, a little bit more this side of the table. And overall, I hope this has helped you decide which one of these is best suited for you and your data storage needs. Thank you so much for watching. If you need more help, go to the free advice section over on NAS Compares, linked in the description, or go to the free community support forum where me, Eddie, and other NAS users can help you with your data storage needs. And linked to the description are links to the reviews for these products, as well as other guides and comparisons for things like Plex and other software services. If this video has helped you, and if you are planning to buy from Amazon anyway, please use the links in the description to take you to Amazon. It won't cost you any extra, but doing so results in anything you buy after uh, Amazon after using those links. A small kickback comes back to us here as Amazon Associates, and that money goes directly into us doing what we do here on the channel, both on the blog and on the YouTube. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you need to learn more, go to the comments or watch the playlist that this is connected to. Other than that, I will see you next time.